Hi, my name is Will Mancini. I'm the founder of Oxano. We're a nationally based nonprofit uh, consulting firm dedicated to uh, churches and vision clarity. Uh, I want to talk to you as a church planner in this uh, kind of key startup season. What have we learned? What do we need to work through when it comes to uh, vision, clarity, these other organizational terms we use, uh, you know, value, strategy, that kind of stuff. So to give a quick backdrop, uh, as a church planner myself, it transitioned in 2001 to coaching uh, guys full time. And what I uh, want to start with is just sharing some of the tensions that every church planner is going to face. And I think the best way to approach a primary tool I want to give you to think about and work on is through uh, just thinking through, talking through some of these natural tensions. The first tension that I see with church planners is the question of, uh, am I running from a ministry model that I had a bad experience with, or am I running to a ministry model that I just deeply love and I'm trying to duplicate or extend or express uh, another, you know, another version or campus of, of a ministry model. Um, and what's important about this is I think in every planter there's, there's an attraction to something they think that works that they want to go out and use or they're running away from something. So they haven't really defined what they're about. They just know they hated their experience in this church and they want to you know, be about something different. So this is a great tension and the number one principle that I want to bring to the table for you, we say clarity isn't everything but it changes everything. Clarity isn't everything you need to kind of have as a leader. There's going to be some messy stuff, but we think you ought to be uh, committed to a process of really clarifying, naming, articulating those core convictions, that, that guiding mission, some of the big dreams that you have as a church planner. And I think many times there's a, a missed opportunity for leaders to name that well enough that it can make a difference with freedom and confidence and credibility. Uh, really, every time you open your mouth and talk about what God's doing in your life and through this, this church you want to plant. Uh, so one of the ways this tension gets in the way is you can be so connected to either what you hate or what you love that you've not fully processed this journey for yourself. So I continually speak uh, and encourage leaders to go through uh, some reflective exercises and to do that with some powerful tools that can bring breakthrough clarity to you. But I'm, I'm thinking of a, of a pastor I just uh, met, church planner I just met, uh, who is from uh, a church in Louisville, Kentucky that had a you know, pretty hip vibe, very cool ministry model. He came to Pearland, Texas uh, to, to plant basically a franchise model in their network, for lack of a better word. And he, lo he loved this church. He loved the, the, you know, what they were doing. And he, he literally said, well, I had to actually process how you know, this, the DNA of this ministry model was going to look different in Pearland as a suburb of Houston. Uh, you know, very, very, very different kind of thing. Uh, the second tension that we have is, uh, am I planning the churches in my head only or the one that uh, God is going to build from the ground up? And so in those early years, there's some ideals, and then there's kind of that engaging, you know, the, the, the enemy in the world and the kingdom happens there in our midst, and God does his sovereign things. And so we want to take into account some learning and some processing in those early years so that you're, you're walking a balance between uh, those two things. Uh, what, what I recommend to some guys is sometimes we get so fixated on a phrasing or some key ideas. And while I celebrate um, knowing your convictions, and obviously I, I, it's a big deal to me that you articulate your vision well, uh, you want to be flexible in those early years to let that build out, maybe modify that, express itself as it develops. Uh, almost like a rosebud develops and unfolds over time. Some of the key components of your vision will develop and unfold over time. Third, we want to talk about this tension of having a once in a lifetime to build a foundation of vision versus this stressful, urgent kind of build out of all the practical things you need to do as a planner uh, to, get, to get this thing off the ground. And this tension is so touchy and difficult because you're tempted to miss out on, on some of the, the foundational culture, foundational pieces. Uh, you, know, you know, you're so focused on the short term, you're trying to make this thing viable. Uh, it brings a lot of urgency in, in good ways, but, but in sometimes overburdening ways. So I continually tell guys, you know, if there's no margin, there will be no imagination. Um, you you want to manage that culture. You want to assume success. So many guys, they get down the road and they've added people, they've added disciples, they've multiplied. Now there's organizational complexity and it's really difficult to go back and, and, and lay you know, kind of a key value uh, system into the, in, into the place. So know, know that at the beginning, and again, this speaks to process. I would say don't miss, don't miss the once in, you know, 
a once in a lifetime opportunity to kind of have the opportunity of a lifetime to set the culture of this of this of this movement of God you want to be a part of uh, that you're starting. Fourth tension is the metrics of yesterday uh, versus kind of a, a new bold scorecard. And what I find is there's a, an initial bang and excitement to do some, some new things, to reimagine, to redream, whatever God's put on your heart. And yet often so quickly we get sucked back to the metrics of yesteryear. I see church planners all the time beating themselves up over you know, the number of people who are coming to a worship gathering. I'm thinking, man, just free yourself from that. And there's a whole, a whole realm of, of dreaming. What if, uh, for example, a planner really dreamed of a different level of engagement with the Word and having a community, a core team of people who over the course of a year deeply engage God's Word? That's a different kind of outcome or different kind of scorecard. And there's just a jillion things you can, you can dream about there. Finally, uh, and really an important one is Will you rely um, on, on the solo talent, or will you translate? Will you be a DNA vision translator, or will you rely on your own talent? So in this fun years of getting the, the, the vision off the ground, you're talented. You're the visionary. You're the guy. You're the gal. You're doing this. And oftentimes, they, we're just tempted to rely on our own talent rather than slowing down enough to create dialogue and really help other people become owners and then themselves translators and themselves everyday visionaries. So one of the common themes through all of this is the, the important role of, of coaching and reflection to get that, uh, get that clarity right. And what I recommend planners to do in that early stage, whether it's pre-launch, post-launch, wherever you are in your community building, uh, these tensions, I believe, uh, require about, what I've seen on average, about a day a month for six months. If you set aside a couple of, you know, two, three hour windows for some deep processing and dialogue with the right tools and right guidance, you can, you can, uh, you can get some tremendous breakthrough clarity. One primary tool for helping you with that is the vision frame. And there are two books that reference the vision frame. One is called Church Unique and the other is called God Dreams. The vision frame in a nutshell is a simple whiteboard drawing. You can, anyone can draw a box on a board or a napkin sketch. So if you're having a coffee table conversation, you can draw this on a napkin sketch. And there are really five components. And the primary thing I want to share with you is as you walk through these tensions, how do you know when you have clarity? How do you know when you've, you've kind of navigated this well as a leader? And I would say it's when you have the, the question, the answers to five questions articulated first in your mind and heart, and then into the world in a clear, concise, and compelling way. Uh, I'll just do a real quick um, definitions on this. Uh, the four sides of the vision frame I really answer four irreducible questions of clarity. Uh, the first is, what are we ultimately supposed to be doing? We call that mission. Uh, that would be like having a compass in your head and making sure everyone on your leadership core team is aligned with the sense of what is this mission that, that Jesus has given us to do. By the way, the nuance here is most church planners are leading with what I call a generic mission. And so we're not parroting just Matthew 28 as our favorite verse or and the other gospel articulations of the Great Commission. We're actually articulating the mission Jesus gave the church for our time and our place, and that becomes very nuanced. I'm thinking of two churches. One church's mission is to, uh, they're right down about a couple miles down the road from each other. One is, uh, their mission is to take personal risks to bring the gospel to every relationship. And just down the road from them is another church. Their mission is inviting people into the unexpected joy of desperate dependence on Jesus. And you feel very two big different tonal qualities and diff different things in that, in, in how those missions are articulated. Over here, this side of the frame, we talk about values. The picture we think of is a fire, having a fire in your belly, a fire in your heart. Every great leader has a compass in their head and a fire in their heart. These would be, as a planter, I usually start with planters and say, what are the top two convictions that really burn deep inside of you? That will, that will guide your philosophy of ministry? What are the shared convictions that will, that will guide every action that will reveal the strengths of your ministry and what you want to start? Over time, I encourage up to four values, but in those early years, this is where you want that, whatever that vision that God's going to build and those people come together, values might emerge over those first couple of years of your initiative. The next piece of the, of the vision frame is strategy. We would, at, we would define strategies as this. What is the picture that shows how you accomplish the mission on the broadest level. 
And so I would encourage a church to be able to, a church planner to be able to just communicate quickly. For example, uh, my home church, we have a simple drop, not dry in. We talk, we talk about a triangle and we say, explore God at your campus. And we draw a circle, we say, grow together in a group. And then we say, make an impact in the 4B area. We draw a square and that goes to the weekly pattern of going back to exploring God at your campus. And I'm able to talk about a very, what would normally be a very big complex church, but I can boil it down to a simple diagram and, and, and very kind of codified language, making an impact in the 4B areas, a very a loaded way for us to talk about who we are as a people of God and in our area of Clear, Clear Lake at Clear Creek Community Church. Um, and, and this is a simple recipe of how we accomplish our mission. And every church planner, every leader I work with, we develop their own, our own unique kind of picture of how we accomplish that mission. And then finally, at the top, we talk about uh, mission measures. How do we know when we're successful at, at the mission that we've articulated? Obviously, we operate with the default scorecard in North America. And we've talked about that already. The, the idea of you know, butts and seats, nickels and noses. Uh, you know, we, we measure attendance, we measure giving. Obviously, those by themselves are not measures of disciple-making mission. And so we want to articulate up here what kind of disciple is your church designed to produce. And when you, your, your, your movement, your, 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 your core team uh, can, can articulate that portrait of a disciple, you can actually monitor progress at that level. So we think that's the four kind of irreducible questions of clarity about today. Who are we today? What is our ministry model? What is our DNA? What is our philosophy? What are we doing? Why do we do it? How do we accomplish that mission? When are we successful? What's our scorecard? I recommend that guys do kind of a top level here, either three to six bullet points that articulate um, that. Uh, for example, uh, one church articulates the top five. You know, how many people in our community can articulate the top five people they're praying for who are far from God? That becomes a measure of missional intentionality or missional living. Um, once you have all that, there's one last question that we ask, and that is, where is God taking us? And it's as if we look through the frame to a picture of the future, and we call that vision proper, and the key question here is where. Now, track with me. Every leader has a compass in their head, you know, fire in their heart. They have an invitation in their hand. They're able to draw a quick picture that shows this is your next step of getting involved and and they can name the wing there's a bullseye that they're aiming at in terms of what real mission success looks like in addition they're able to articulate the next big dream uh, in God dreams I talk about you, know, you can look long into the distance and there's a mountain scene out there and there ought to be a next big dream on your heart that's years away that you can articulate and there's a short-term horizon the road in front of us and some milestones and I encourage uh, planners to be able to have one big goal at a time in the short-term future that you can focus your, your energy on and focus your, your team around. And so part of this skill of painting a picture uh, involves both the ability to inspire people to big dreams and the ability to focus your resources uh, very, very uh, sharply on, on one big thing at a time. Peter Drucker said, there are no results without a concentration of resources. Most church planners I meet are trying to do too much. Why? They've not processed deeply the clear calling that God's given them in a way that becomes very manageable, that becomes ultimately freeing. Why should you take some additional time, one day a month for the next six months, to work through the vision frame of your church, to work on that picture of the future? Ultimately, I believe it boils down to freedom. Freedom is not the freedom to go do anything you want to do. It's the freedom to give all of yourself to what God is calling you to do. I run into too many pastors who are busy, they're burned out, they're overwhelmed, and that's coming from a, a lack of slowing down to really listen to that voice of God. Uh, maybe a final image of ultimate clarity that I would give to you is uh, Jesus in John chapter 17. And he, he gets to the end of his uh, whole life and even a, a very busy three-year ministry, a ministry where people clamored to get time with Jesus, a ministry where he had to go on to the next village, even though there was still healing and other things left undone uh, in his wake a wake of unmet needs as he navigated and stayed on mission and yet he gets to the end of a very busy ministry and he says Lord Father I have accomplished everything I've completed everything you've called me to do and that's a beautiful uh, thing to be able to say uh, Jesus wasn't called to do everything but he had clear marching orders from the Father 
that God at every footstep, Jesus knew his origin, his mission, and his destiny. And you as a church planner, every time you talk, every time you pray, every time you preach, every time you cast vision, every time you put an update on Facebook or send out a tweet or do anything in the name of what God's calling you to do, my heartbeat is for you to do that with compelling clarity. You can't get there through a product, a book, a conference. It requires personal process. Walk that process, and you will push through, break through, to a new level of clarity. And I'd encourage you with uh, some of these initial ideas. As a next step, draw a napkin uh, sketch right now on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. Just draw a box and just ask yourself right now, on a scale of 1 to 5, how clear am I on articulating the big thing that I'm ultimately supposed to be doing? Scale of 1 to 5 on mission. And then do them here on values. Write down those top two or three, maybe four values. What are, how clear are you? Scale of one to five on those. If you had to draw a napkin sketch of how do you accomplish the mission, what would you draw? How clear is that? Score yourself one to five there. Uh, you know, measure of success. If your mission is to be, you know, to let's say you're going to you know, help people become fully devoted followers, what's a fully devoted follower look like? And, and how would you define that? How clear are you? Scale of one to five there. When you look out long term, three to five years, how clear is your dream? Score yourself there, one to five. How about in the short term? What's the most important single thing you've got to do as a church planner in this next year? How clear are you on that? Uh, and score yourself one to five. Use that as a starting point and then dive into some tools that can help you uh, do this. Uh, God wants to do something cosmically significant and locally specific in your ministry. Clarity is in everything, but it changes everything and gives you a level of freedom and confidence and progress that, uh, that will blow you away. Thanks.